Hi friends and net aspirants, welcome to yet another video episode of High Point. And in this video lecture, we will be learning about the play The White Devil, one of the major uh, Jacobian tragedy that was written by John Webster. About John Webster, we have done a detailed video, you can check on that. In this video, particularly, we will be learning this uh, play, The White Devil. We will be seeing an introduction that will be followed by a character, character list and also then we will move on to a detailed summary of the play. And the play was written between 1608 and uh, 1609. Just like you can find many materials related to NTA, UGC, Net, JRF, English language and literature in my youtube channel high point you can find me on instagram as well my id is right here Ligi Maria 90 we are actually providing a lot more things instagram in my instagram feed and also in story as well as in real session uh, you will find many materials that will be helpful in your net share of english language and literature if you have not yet subscribed to my youtube channel please do subscribe because i don't want you to miss any of the materials that we are sharing here one by one that will be great help in your NTA net JRF preparations at the same time if you are literature student that will also be a great help for you so moving on let's have the introductory session first of all uh, the original full title of the play is the white table or the tragedy of paolo giordano ursini duke of branciano with the life and death of victoria corovana the famous venetian courtesan so this entire play uh, in a nutshell is given in the title okay it's about a kind of uh, the relationship that happened between Duke of Brasciano and Victoria of Corobana and both of them where they were married people and they had a, a love affair uh, I mean um, love affair out of their wedlock and uh, uh, that eventually ended up in their own death okay so this is the full title which is very lengthy and it cut short and uh, you know uh, we usually call this play as the white devil it's a revenge tragedy by John Webster and John Webster belongs to the Jacobian age of English literature and it was first performed by Queen Anne's men in the Red Bull Theatre in 1612 and it is based on historical affair between Paolo Giordano, Duke of Bracciano and Vittorio Corombana, a poor but charming noble woman. So this is again this play was based on this historical affair which was so popular it happened between Duke of Dashiano and Victoria Corobana their love affair their extramarital affair that is the uh, the whole story is centered uh, around their extramarital affair that eventually led to their own uh, death their own tragic death. And he brought many characters to it. He means Webster brought many characters to it who were not present in the historical event. So Webster actually took an inspiration from the historical affair and he centered the play around the extramarital affair of these people. But he also brought many characters to it in order to enhance and make some effect impact upon those who are watching it so when he made it into a play he added many characters he added many events uh, and he brought about many effects okay now let's move on to uh, the character list of the play the white devil so before that let me tell you if you are looking for some uh, simple well arranged and uh, comprehensible study materials online study materials for your NTA, UGC, Net, JRF, English lang language and literature then you can visit my website www.highpoint.in you don't have to waste your time on digging for materials but you can invest your time on uh, studying and covering them and also revising them covering is one thing covering the entire material is one thing and Revising is as important as covering the entire material. So you can check uh, my materials that we have provided in the website www.highpoint.in and you can have the demo materials there as well as you can see what all things we have provided if interested you can all have all of them with 15 percentage of off now and also you can have more if you want to know you can message me or whatsapp me or call me in my number or in my instagram page let's see the character list of the white devil the play first one is Monticelso. Monticelso he is a cardinal and later he becomes a pope and Francisco de Medici uh, he is duke of Florence and Brasciano husband of Isabella and love with he is in love with Vittoria that means Brasciano 
uh, is having a love affair, extramarital affair with Victoria, uh, again a married woman. Giovanni. Giovanni is Bracciano's son by Isabella. Lodovico, Italian count in love with Isabella. Okay. Camillo, uh, sorry. Camillo. Camillo is Vittoria's husband. See, Bracciano's husband is Isabella and Giovanni is their uh, son. And Lodovico is a, a, another count. He, he is another Italian count who is in love with Isabella. But Isabella is not giving any signs of interest to Lodovico. Okay. Camillo is Victoria's husband and Flaminio is Victoria's brother. Isabella uh, is Francisco's sister, wife of Bracciano. Okay. Vittorio Corobana, sister of Flaminio and wife of Camillo. Cornelia, mother to Victoria. Zanche. Zanche is more servant to Victoria. Love with Flaminio first but later with Francisco. So, uh, Zanche she was in love with first with Flaminio, but later she changes uh, her love with love interest with uh, Francisco. Then Dr. Julio is there, then ambassadors, courtiers, lawyers and many other uh, minor characters are there. So at least remember the major characters, okay? Uh, and the storyline too. Now let's have a detailed summary of the play. I have not divided this summary into acts or scenes because that is not inter uh, that is not needed for the White Devil. For most important plays, we will be doing such elaborate uh, summaries, discussions of summaries. Now, the play opens with Lodovico, a murderous Italian count, informed about his banishment from Rome by his friends Gasparo and Antonelli. So the play opens, Lodovico is an Italian count and he is a criminal minded person and he uh, got an information about his banishment from Rome by his friends. So his friends Gaspero and Antinoli uh, give this information to Lodovico. But he leaves enraged and gives money to arrange his pardon. So he gives some money to these uh, friends of him in order to arrange his pardon and he leaves enraged from Rome. Meanwhile, Duke of Bracciano comes to the house of Camillo to seduce his wife, uh, Victoria Corobana. So Camillo, he was not there and um, you know, uh, Victoria Corobana is wife of Camillo and Duke of Brancio, Bracciano comes to the house of Camillo in order to seduce his wife, Vittoria Corobana. With the help of her social climbing brother, that means Flaminio, he is he's such a person that he wants to have, uh, wants to have more power, more, uh, you know, more money and more status quo in his life. So in order to have that, he helps Flaminio help Duke of Bracciano to have a love affair, to have a, uh, extramarital affair with her, his own sister Victoria Corobana. So because of his need, because, because of his desire to have social uh, climbing, Flaminio allows and with the help of uh, his servant Sanche, uh, uh, Corobana, Victoria Corobana allows uh, Duke of Bracciano to her and she told about a dream. So when uh, Victoria and Bracciano they met, uh, she told uh, a dream that she had seen in her sleep to Bracciano, which in which he says that uh, her husband, that means Camillo, and his wife, Isabella, they are threat to her as well as to their relationship. So he promises to protect her. So they are in love, most probably lustful love, but still he promises to protect her. Just then her mother, Cornelia, comes out of the shadows and cursed her. Uh, for their relationship okay so Cornelia was there under the shadow listening to them and seeing whatever they are doing and Cornelia after hearing uh, his promise to Victoria to protect her Cornelia comes out of the shadow and cursed Victoria for having such a relationship now now, Brasciano's wife Isabella meets with her brother Francisco, the Duke of Florence, and pleads him to be mercy while talking to Brasciano, even if he is infidel to her. So now the news uh, spreaded everywhere that everybody knows that these people are in uh, in a relationship, extramarital relationship, which was so unconventional. So Isabella, even though she is such a beautiful, charming, and calm person, uh, he she is obviously she is sad so isabella 
she comes and she knows that her brother francisco already knew about this uh, news of her husband having an extramarital affair with uh, victoria so he she asks uh, her brother to be calm and show mercy while talking to graciano and um, even though he is infidel he is uh, he has uh, broken the marital vow to her and graciano and francisco they talk and they threat each other of war and if they if war happens it will actually affect the entire state okay if something like that happens but later they seem to subside the threat of war in another scene in which isabella francisco graciano and montesello meet so when these people met so they were no, no more they were not talking about the war that they uh, threat uh, against each other and brashiana talks rudely to isabella despite she being calm to him and he mercilessly divorces her while she takes the responsibility for instigating the uh, divorce so brashiana is having an extramarital affair with whom with another married woman known as victoria but brashiana talks rudely to isabella just like that isabella has done something wrong in order to instigate the divorce and mercilessly he divorces her then what happens dr julio plots with flemnio and brashiano to ha on how to murder isabella and camillo without leaving in evidence if they left in evidence that will be fatal to them they will uh, come under the judgments of law and regulation and they need to undergo some sort of punishment right that they don't want so dr julio along with flemnio and brashiano they talk about they discussed about how to murder this dreadful people for their relationship so let's see how they kill isabella and camillo now montesello comes and sends newly arrived camillo to fight with the pirates so that they may secretly observe brashiano and victoria's behavior while he is away so even though they have heard this news and they sure but they don't know how they are meeting how, what kind of behavior that they are showing what are their habits and all so montesello even though camillo came back from the battlefield montesello he uh, sends newly arrived camillo again to find pirates and all fight with them so that they could watch secretly observe brashiano and vittorio's behavior while they while they are together the schemers had a horrendous plan to murder camillo and isabella so the conspirators they finally arrived at a better plan a horrendous plan actually to murder to end the life of camillo and isabella and brashiano comes with a conjurer and he gives him the vision about the execution of the plan so brashiano uh, comes with a conjurer who is doing all this uh, kind of black magic and all and he gives this conjurer gives him a vision in a mirror about the execution of the plan that they had and what was the plan he has put poison on the lips of the portrait of brashiano on which isabella kisses every night she does so and dies at once so what happens she usually every day she does a ritual of kissing her husband's portrait on the lips of his of her husband's portrait every night it's a ritual for for her isabella's ritual so he knows that so he put uh, he puts uh, poison on the lips of this portrait of brashiano his own wife he is doing this look at far he has gone to murder how far he has become a murderer a cruel murderer and a cold blooded creature in order to kill isabella for his lustful love for another woman okay so isabella kisses every night so he does she does so in that night too uh, in which uh, he has put poison on the lips of the portrait and immediately after kissing she dies at once meanwhile camillo and flemnio having a drinking night and lead to have a vault vaulting fight so now they have get rid with isabella then now they need to focus upon camillo what happens this will be carried out by flemnio so flemnio and uh, camillo they were having a drinking night so flemnio acts like they are having uh, while they were talking something arises and they started fighting each other so uh, while they were fighting people were there and they moved to a vault in which nobody could see him so uh, see them fighting so flemnia cuts him while they are alone 
and made to look like he was killed in the vault fight. So while they were fighting in the vault, he killed him. So Flamio cuts him while they were alone and made it look like he was killed in the vault fight. And placed the visions Brasciano leaves. So now nobody could have any, um, you know, any kind of uh, suspicion about these murderers that cannot lead to them, lead to Brasciano, Flamio, or uh, uh, Vittoria, and all. So after seeing this vision, as the conjurer showed him, uh, he was satisfied with the vision and he leaves. Now, what happens? Next, the trial of Victoria as Monticello and others felt Flaminio is involved in the death of Camillo even though he lacked evidences. So, Flaminio, everybody knows that Flaminio killed uh, Camillo but he, they lacked evidences. So, a trial uh, started about these murders, about these deaths. So, Victoria was uh, trialed first. Even though Victoria seemingly won her argument, she was sent to house of Convertites, a place for penitent whores. So, you know, it's like uh, Victoria, even, she is a woman. She had no sound. She had no opinion. Uh, nobody will hear her opinion, even though in this case, she is not at all a and not at all an innocent person but victoria even though seemingly he was she was winning her arguments uh, while having the trial and all she was sent to uh, the house of convertitus in a place for penitent horse then lord of Vico arrives since his banishment was lifted so initially the play was opened when lord of Vico was banished from rome now lord of Vico, uh, he is a vicious uh, count who is criminal and he, he comes back and uh, uh, and involves in this case and Flaminio hits Lodovico for, for calling Victoria a whore. So Flaminio was also there while having the trial so Victoria was called as whore by Lodovico and Flaminio hits him for that. But Francisco was looking for a chance to take revenge for his sister's murder. So Francisco he is enraged because her sister was murdered. He is so sure about they have done something in order to kill her. She was poisoned. And Francisco was looking for a chance to take revenge for his sister's murder. And he gets the black book of criminals from Monticello who have an, uh, have an appropriate man to carry out his actions. So what happens? There is a book known as black book. What is in that book? It's a book of criminals. Book of criminals' names and details related to them, and what are what is their uh, specialization? All those kind of details are there in that black book, and this black book belongs to Monticello, who is a cardinal, and soon uh, he has become uh, a pope. See how pope needs to be very innocent, and nobody will suspect that he has such a kind of book with him. So, but here we can see the controversies, actual things what are happening. And Isabella's ghost appeared to him, but he thought that it's an outcome of his own melancholy. As Francisco was brooding about the death of Isabella, Isabella's ghost appeared to him, but he thought that he, since he is brooding, he is thinking intensely about him. Uh, this vision about Isabella's ghost is just an outcome of his own melancholy, his own uh, gloomy status of mind. Now, he writes a fake love letter to Victoria in order to enrage Brasciano. So, Brasciano uh, and Victoria, they are in love. So, Brasciano, he has many insecurities with himself. So, uh, in order to break their trust, in order to break their relationship be between that is happening between Victoria and Brasciano, Francisco writes a fake love letter to Victoria in order to enrage Brasciano. So that Brasciano also think that, you know, they are having, Victoria and Francisco having an affair uh, without the knowledge of Brasciano. See, Brasciano had an extramarital affair with Victoria. So Victoria could do extramarital affair and cheat on his her own husband. So Brasciano, after having this fake love letter, he will think that she, now... Uh, she is about to leave him for another man. And Brasher and Flemio come 
out of the convertites to leave Vittoria, but then Francisco's servant comes and delivers the love letter. Brasciano reads it and calls her a whore and denies any relationship with her, even though she refused everything, anything uh, having with Francisco. So what happens? Brasciano and Flamio now uh, they are in convertites in order to relieve uh, Victoria from there. But then when uh, they were talking to uh, Victoria, Francisco's servant comes with this fake love letter to uh, Victoria to deliver to her. And Brasciano grabs this uh, letter and reads it and calls her a whore and denies any relationship with her. And uh, she refuses it and she tells that she is unaware about it. She have she doesn't have anything with Francisco and all, but he obviously has his own insecurities. After a while, when he saw Victoria sobbing, he went calm and resolved to break her out of the prison. So, in the height of the uh, emotion, Brasciano denied any relationship with her and he goes away. After well, after a while, when he saw, he came back and he saw that Victoria is sobbing, crying, and he went calm and resolved to break her the result to relieve her out of the prison and the Montes also is announced as the new pope and Francisco heard the exile of Brasciano, Victoria and Flaminio. So as soon as uh, Victoria was relieved from convertitus for the horse, uh, Brasciano, Victoria and Flaminio they exiled from the place and Montes also was announced as the new pope and Francisco heard about the exile of these three people. And Francisco wanted Montesalsos to execute them while he could hire Lord Vico to murder them. So, in, uh, just now I told you that uh, from that black book, they found a suitable person to carry out their revenge uh, against these people. So, Francisco wanted Montesalso to excommunicate them from the religion as they have committed ad adultery. So, so uh, after ex excommunicating them, they, they won't have any power, right? So he could easily hire Lord Vico in order to murder them and have his revenge. And Lord Vico, uh, Lord Vico also reveals his, this plan to Modicelso and got support for it and sets for his mission. So Francisco uh, already revealed his plan to Modicelso and Lord Vico also revealed his plan of murdering these three people to Modicelso. So Montesoso, since he is the new pope, he cannot directly act on this, but he uh, got support. I mean, Francisco and Lodivico, they got support from him and Lodivico sets for his mission to take revenge. Now, Victoria and Brasciano are now married, holding the court in Padua, while a moor with two uh, capuchin monks arrives there. So now they are in another place. And they are married now. Victoria and Brasciano, they are newly married now. And they hold the court of Padua. And while they are holding the court of Padua, a Moor and two Capuchin monks arrived there. So actually, these murderers, in order to murder Victoria and Brasciano, they have arrived in the disguise of Moor and two Capuchin monks. And Brasciano welcomes them without knowing that they are Francisco, Lodovico and Gaspero in disguise. Okay. These uh, Moor was, uh, Francisco was disguised as a Moor and Lodovico and Gaspero in the disguise of two Capuchin monks. While Marcelo and Flaminio fight over Flaminio's improper relationship with Sanche and Flaminio kills him. So what happens? Another person is there, Marcelo. And Marcelo and Flaminio, they were having a fight over Flaminio's improper or, you know, uh, a sided relationship with Sanche, the uh, servant. And Flaminio kills uh, Marcelo in that fight. And Brasciano is forced to trial him for his murder. So now Brasciano is a duke of Padua. So, Brasciano is forced to uh, carry out a trial of uh, Flemnia for this murder. And after that, we can see that Brasciano was poisoned uh, by the Moor, I mean, Francisco and other conspirators. And Brasciano, just like he poisoned his own wife, he met with the same, same fate. And Jean Sanchez reveals everything to Francisco, who is in disguise of Moor, uh, Moor Mulinazer as Sanche is in love with him. Now, Sanche is no more in love with uh, Flaminio. Flaminio is imprisoned and Sanche, he, she is now interested in Francisco and since she is in love with Francisco and Flaminio decided to go from the 
court after witnessing Brashiana's ghost. Flaminio decides to kill Victoria in order to set everything right. So, Flaminio now he knows that see, their relationship is the main cause of all these tragedies happening. So, after seeing, seeing Brachiano's ghost, what Flaminio decides? Flaminio decides to kill Victoria in order to set everything right. And Flaminio, Victoria, and Jean Sanche decided to suicide with Flaminio doing it first. So, what happens? Flaminio comes to kill Vittorio and he also saw that Sanche is now interested in Francisco the mold and you know uh, he is enraged and he tells them that I am going to kill or else we can uh, we can commit suicide together so Flaminio, Victorio, Sanche they decided to suicide uh, and Flaminio told them that he will uh, go for the first attempt to commit suicide and they break the promise and Flaminio reveals that the gun was not loaded and uh, he springs to kill them but Lodovico and Gasparo barge in. So what happens? Flaminio, uh, he was willing to do the suicide first and after committing the suicide, he knew that Victoria Zanche, they break the promise and it is revealed that the gun was not loaded and uh, he again springs up to kill them but he gets up to kill them, but Lodovica and Gasparo barges, barge in. They stabbed them, but they got captured and they got imprisoned by Giovanni and the English ambassador. That's how the play ends. Okay, So, it's a revenge tragedy and a lot of things are happening. Extramarital uh, affair is a key central theme. And around that, every other character is revolving and every other character reveals their true nature. And at the same time, they have met with some or other kind of tragedies in their life. So these are the, some of the themes of the play. Revenge, individualism, misogyny, appearance, female virtue, class, medieval values. You can find many more themes such as extramarital affair, uh, religious values and many other things you can find out. These are some of the things that I felt that are there in the play. I hope uh, the storyline of the play is clear to you. Do remember the storyline. At the same time, do remember the character list and the other details that we have shared in it. And do visit my website www.hypon.in to have more detailed summaries of major works uh, of written by the authors of English literature. At the same time, you will find not only English literature but all the other topics which are needed to be covered for your net journey of English language literature exam. Okay. So, if you are interested, let me know by giving a message or call in the number or you can message me or call in the uh, Instagram uh, page as well. So, do follow me on Instagram for having all the facilities, all the materials and things that we are providing there. At the same time, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, to subscribe and leave a message and share this to your uh, your friends, those who are interested and your message and your one share and like will actually uh, inspire me to do more videos like this which are relevant in English language and literature. So that's all guys. Let me uh, see you in the next video. Until then stay tuned to High Point. Ta-da!